In this video, we're going to learn about factoring polynomials, and we're going to deal specifically with a specific type of polynomial called a quadratic. And if you recall, the quadratic equation is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And there's a number of reasons why we want to factor a quadratic, and one of those is is to uh, find the roots or the the x-intercepts of that quadratic. And in, in this video, we're going to we're going to primarily focus on the AC method. So, the AC method is what we'll use. And when we do this, we want to identify our value of a, our value of c, and we need to use those because those are going to be components of the factor, okay? So let's start with an example. We'll just say y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6, okay? And with the ac method, our a value is equal to 1 in this. That's the term in front of this x squared. And the c value is equal to 6, and we have to find the product of those two. And although it's a little trivi trivial in this example because that, that 1 times 6 is just going to give us 6, in a later example we'll see um, where that comes into play. So once we figure out this AC value, we want to look at um, basically products and sums that equal certain values. And we, when we do the products, we want products to equal 6, okay? And then we want the sum of the two numbers that make up that product to equal 5. And if you recall, when we factor a pro polynomial or factor this quadratic in factored form, it's going to be some variable or maybe a coefficient in a variable plus a number times a coefficient in uh, variable plus another number, okay? And in this one, our first term is x squared, so we know for sure that this first term has to be x and x, and we need to figure out what these terms are right here and what the signs on those are. Since it's a positive 6, I always like to start off at the beginning, so I'm going to look at 1 times 6. This gives us 6, but then when we look at 1 plus 6, this gives us 7, okay? So that doesn't quite equal 5. The next one I would go to is 2 times 3, and 2 times 3 gives us 6, and then 2 plus 3, and that gives us 5. Now, we, our goal was to get a sum of 5 and a product of 6 with those two numbers, and this one happens to accomplish that for us. So we have a value of a 2 and a value of a 3 that we're going to put in there, and since they're both positive, it makes it easy, okay? So what we're going to do is write plus 2 and plus 3, and it really doesn't matter in this one which order we put those in because we don't have any uh, coefficients in front of these variables that are going to affect that. And in the later video, we'll see how that works. So this would be equal to y in factored form. And like I said before, if we were solving this, we would say, okay, um, we want to figure out when uh, y is 0 so we can find our x-intercepts. So when we look at this, it would look something like this, x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And this can be broken down into two parts. This first part on the left, x plus 2, that could be equal to 0. And if we multiply 0 by that, the whole thing becomes 0. The second part, x plus 3, that could be 0. Um, and when we multiply this whole thing out, that would also make 0. And both of them could be 0. So what we really want to look at is when x plus 2 is equal to 0 and when x plus 3 is equal to 0. And these are pretty simple equations to solve. We just subtract 2 from both sides for the left side of this. So x is equal to negative 2. Or um, subtract 3 from both sides of this one over here. And we'd end up with x is equal to negative 3. So those would be um, two of our solutions. And we should write those in ordered pair. Remember, x equals negative 2 is actually a vertical line. So it really should be negative 2 comma 0 is one of our roots or our solutions. Then the other one should be negative 3 comma 0. And now let's look at another example using this AC method to solve it. So first of all, let's start off with the equation y is equal to 3x squared minus 7x minus 20. Now in the last example, remember we didn't have this leading coefficient on the x squared term and you know that makes it a little bit trickier but we can still do it. So again we want to identify our values of a which is 3 and c which happens to be negative 20 and we want to find the product of those two values ac is equal to 3 times a negative 20 which is a negative 60 and, you know, once we have that, again, we're looking at products. And 
and sums. And actually, in this case, it'll be differences. But we want to find products that equal a negative 60. And we want to find sums that equal this middle term right here, negative 7. We got always have to remember to carry the negative sign with it. Okay. So when I'm doing these products initially, I'm not going to be concerned about the negative values. So I look at this, and I need products that equal 60. And I, you know, when you're beginning and doing this, I always recommend starting off with okay, 1 times a negative 60. This gives us negative 60. Okay, and then go to your next number. Two, two goes in there evenly. So two times 60. That's or two, not two times 60. Two times negative 30. That gives us a negative 60. Okay, and I should be over here on the at the same time writing the sums. If we go one minus 60, this is going to be negative 59. That's too big of a number. It's not equal to seven. Same thing with two minus 30. That's equal to a negative 28. So again, too big of a number. And you'll see as we work through this, my next one would be 3. 3 times um, 20, or negative 20. And that's going to be negative 60. And then we say, OK, 3 minus 20. That's going to be a negative 17. You can see that we're getting closer. The next one, we'd say, OK, 4 times 15, negative 15. And that's going to be negative 60. And then when we look at 4 minus 15, that is going to be a negative 11. And then when we look at 5 times a negative 12 is equal to a negative 60. And then we say, OK, 5 minus 12 is equal to uh, negative 7, which when we get to here, notice that's our negative 7, which satisfies our sum. And our product still satisfi satisfies that negative 60. Now, you might be wondering why I'm choosing the right one to be um, negative. It doesn't really matter. You just have to find the right combination of what's going to give you that. And I knew that the larger number is going to have to be negative in order to get a negative value over here. So that's why I chose that to be negative. So now once I figured that out, I can start breaking this down and figuring out how I'm going to factor this. Okay. So first of all, let me rewrite the equation. It's y equals and when we factor it, it's going to be in those two parts. We know that the first term has to be 3x squared. So I'm going to put the 3x right here and the x right here, because 3x times x is going to give us that 3x squared. We can't really factor that 3 or break that down anymore. Now, you have to recall that when we found this value of 60 right here, we looked at the product of 3 times 20. So we have to take that into account with this tw negative 12 right here. Okay. Um, and that 3 right there is a component of that. Okay, So we're going to divide out the 3. And it has to be positive, because the 3 is on that first x term right there. When, when we divide out the 3, 3 times some number gives us 12. That some number is actually negative 4. Okay, So 3 times negative 4 gives us 12. We already have the 3 accounted for up here. And when we look at this, it would have to be 3. The only way I'm going to multiply that by a negative 4 is if it's over here on the right side. So this is going to go minus 4. And on this right side, we have the 5 left over, which is right here. So it's going to be plus 5. Okay, And this should be our equation in, uh, in factored form right there. And again, like I said, if we're solving this to find when 0 is equal to 3x plus 5, and 0 is equal to x minus 4. And I'm kind of skipping a step here. I'd say 0 is equal to this whole expression. So in other words, when y is 0, these are the two components we have to look at. I just solve for x. This side, I would start off subtracting 5 from both sides. And I'd have negative 5 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And I would end up with x is equal to negative 5 over 3. And remember, this is actually a vertical line right there at negative 5 thirds. So we should write this as an ordered pair. So negative 5 over 3, comma 0, because that's when it crosses the y-axis. And then we do this for the other side. Add 4 to both sides, add 4 to this side. And we end up with x is equal to 4. But again, this is a vertical line where, at, where um, 4 is on the x-axis. And so our ordered pair for this would be 4, comma 0. All right. And again, checking this, we can go through and we can expand this and make sure that it is correct. And I'll do that real quick right here. So we have 3x plus 5. And I'm just looking at the expression. And this is just to check it, x minus 4. And when I do this, I'm going to distribute the 3x over each of those terms. So it's going to be 3x squared minus, I almost made a mistake there, minus 12x. 
and then I have to take this 5 into consideration, multiply that by everything on the right, so plus 5x minus 20. And when I combine the like terms together right here, we end up with 3x squared minus 7x minus 20, which is exactly what we started with up here. So it does check. So hopefully this video will help you when you're using the AC method to factor polynomials and specifically quadratic equations.